This is a man who stands up there. And he, he, may not, he, he may not be the kind of politician who people would vote for. But he lives in a democratic society. He stands up. He says what he thinks. Tony Bed did the same. Michael Foote did the same. Neither of them were brilliantly successful. None of them became prime minister. But I really respect people who stand up there and say what they think. We, we don't have to agree with them. We don't have to vote for them. I think it's, it's sad for the Labour Party because when you see what the Labour Party has done for this country over it, it, its lifetime, it, it's quite extraordinary the contribution it's made. But what happened, and when you have Tony Blair saying something, it's the man who took away the soul of the Labour Party as far as I'm concerned. And I wouldn't make this, I wouldn't make this up. I, I think what's interesting for me with Cameron and Osborne is that I believe them. They mean it. You know, they have their values, their Tory values. They mean it, and I respect that. They're standing up and they're saying it. And I think that's really good for, for, for all of us. And I think it's a, I had a godmother who used to tell me something wonderful, and it's relevant here. My godmother used to whack her finger at me and, and say, Michael, Always before I went out of the door, having not seen her for five years, I want you to remember something. She was Scottish, so I'm trying. I want you to remember something, Michael. People matter. And I think Jeremy Corbyn thinks people matter. What do you do, Rob Holfman? We crocodile tears at the drama well, inside the Labour Party, if that's course, how it could be Of course I'm wary as the Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party to give advice to the Labour Party and I also think it's important in politics to have a heart. But the one thing I would say, I think the Labour Party's problem is this, is that it has uh, too many Jeremy Corbyns and not enough Frank Fields. Because when uh, someone like Frank Field gets up in the House of Commons and talks about welfare and talks about the economy, many people from all sides of the House will listen because what he wants to do is create an intelligent debate about what is best for our country. And because the Labour Party now has too many Jeremy Corbyns rather than too many Frank Fields, what we are going to get is just more of the same, more borrowing, more spending, more debt and populist left-wing argument on the economy as we've seen and and what has happened as a result is that the leadership candidates all of them instead of uh, thinking uh, new thoughts instead of following some of the things that people like Frankfield and John Crudders say about human communitarianism and uh, how the Labour Party should be they've just tacked to the left to try and appease Jeremy Corbyn supporters rather than create a new vision for themselves Thank you. Um, I should just say that, in fact, Jeremy Corbyn will be on this programme in August, and all the other candidates have been invited to come on as well, not all together. Um, we'll go to our next question, please. Catherine Owen, how likely is the promotion of British values across UK society to be effective in countering the attraction of ISIS? The acoustics here sounds a bit of a problem. You speak completely clearly, but one or two might miss it. How likely is the promotion of British values across UK society to be effective in countering the attraction of ISIS? This obviously relates to David Cameron's major speech on this issue, which he uh, talked, said, amongst other things, for too long we have been a passively tolerant society, saying to our citizens, as long as you obey the law, we will leave you alone. There are people born and raised in this country who don't really identify with Britain. Michael Morpurgo. Um, I'm still struggling, and I have been a, a British person for 71 years now, and I'm still trying to work out what British values are. One of the wonderful things about Britain, and there are many wonderful things about it, is that it is left up to us to work out our own values. It is a truly democratic country. Um, we don't force feed people ideas. Um, we might encourage it. And certainly in schools, it's a, a job to encourage it. But we allow people to develop and to change. And I think one of the great problems we've got is that people um, who might be inclined to support ISIS feel excluded 
not just from this country, I have to say, it's not only from this country that these young men and young women are going across the seas to do this. They're doing it from all over. We must remember that it's not just a British problem. Um, but unless we are inclusive uh, in this society, then we are going to lose more and more and more of these young people. And they, they are almost exclusively young people. We must remember that. They've been taken by a cult. That's really what it is. And maybe part of the reason is that our society doesn't seem to hold itself together. It doesn't embrace people. It excludes too many people. Too many people feel alienated. And I think that is what Cameron has to take on. Because you have to somehow enable everyone to feel that they have an investment in the society. And that it is not a place where some people get rich and others struggle. And where, I suppose, people feel left out. And if they feel left out, then they're going to want to go somewhere else. That's what I mean. Claire Fox. Uh, excellent question, because this is uh, a very important and profound uh, uh, issue that confronts us. And at least for that small part of the speech that David Cameron emphasised that this is the struggle of our generation, I had some sympathy with him. Then practically everything else is that I disagreed with. But at least I thought it was a recognition of how important it was. And then how do we tackle it? You know, what's extraordinary for me is that so many young Western uh, 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 Muslims are joining ISIS, I mean, whether they're British or whatever, but why is that? Um, and I think it's, it, when you kind of identify it, and I don't think there's any simple answers to it, you find a kind of toxic mix of identity politics and kind of youth, uh, kind of nihilistic alienation. Um, but I, 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 what my fear is that we kind of see them as kind of these young people as victims, whereas I think that's far too easy. We talk about grooming. Actually, they often actively go searching out, and we have to take into account that there's something about our society that doesn't give a positive enough account of itself to attract people away from joining what is the most barbaric death cult most of us have, uh, have any uh, knowledge of. But what does the British government do then? It says, well, we'll actively argue, we'll, we'll promote British values. Now, if that was a battle of ideas where they were going to go out and argue to win the hearts and minds of young people, great. But no, they said we're going to win anyone who doesn't sign up to agree with uh, uh, British values, we're going to ban from university campuses from, um, and we're going to actually make all of the concessions and undermine the very values of the Enlightenment, of free speech and free assembly in order to impose British values. It makes an absolute mockery of the nonsense of the very values that we're trying to defend. So the terrorists come here. So we have a... A situation where, where we have a backward Islamist force that basically says the gains of modernity and Western Enlightenment values are to be smashed and destroyed. And we say, we will fight you on the beaches, but we'll destroy them bit by bit ourselves, so you don't need to come very far. That is the, We are frightened and terrorised, and that's not inspiring to any young British people, and it's certainly not got very much to do with values. So, very big question. One, one plea I would make is that we don't get crass about it, that, that we realise that this is hard work, that I've organised a number of debates on this very issue of why young people are joining ISIS, and I don't pretend I've got the answer. But can we all take it seriously? I don't think it's because we're not inclusive enough. I'm not convinced of that. I think we have to look young people in the eye and have a row with them. I think we need to say Sharia law is a backward law. I think we need to say the caliphate is a destructive thing. I don't think we should make concessions or make people try and feel good about themselves. I think it requires a bloody good argument with a lot of good people. But we've got to have the confidence we can win it. And I don't think the government think they've got the Are ideas that can Claire, amongst other things, the government's proposing it in its strategy confronting extremist ideology, challenging extremist conspiracy theories, countering the quote's glamour of the ISIL narrative. Um, tackling extremism in schools, refusing to turn a blind eye to abuses like FGM uh, and forced marriages. We will lock people up that, 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 that um, uh, espouse the wrong ideas. There's a whole trail of things that amount to the policing of thought. The reason I'm saying that is, the language, that's what I said, I agree with all of that rhetoric. When you break it down, you then see that they're actually betraying the civil liberties, the rule of law, they're actually dictating what teachers teach in schools. 